guys, Joel from Sharp 11 Music here and I recently posted this amazing solo by Eric Marienthal with the Goodwin Gordon with the Gordon Goodwin Big Fat Band and he does there a very very cool complete rip like from down the bottom of the horn into the altissimo like a one big epic glissando and there were some people wondering how that all works so I'll just explain that to you and let me give you also a second trick because directly after that rip and a few bars then Eric has a very nice little thing he does with the uh, false fingerings which creates this really rhythmic thing uh, which you can do on on any note here but he does it on the A which is something like so he does that a couple of times during the solo so if you want to practice it it's good to know how it works but first let's go to that um, glissando let's listen once once more because it's that great Okay, so how does that work? First, you'll need to be able to play altissimos and so I know that that might uh, slacked out quite a couple of people watching now already because that's quite a complex little feature if you're playing just the first few years you'll probably not be able to do that I covered that super in depth in a other older video like it's a it's a quite long video but I go deep there into every aspect which is I think needed to have a altissimo and then even make it sound proper because that's the second thing when you start getting altissimos out um, probably your parents or your wife or with whomever you are living are not happy and probably neither are your neighbors so you might want to try to make that sound nice so watch that other video for that but if you are able to do it it basically works as follows you need to be able to whistle and if you can whistle and you can do this um, I will make a complete fool of myself because my whistling is terrible but you'll get the idea I'm worse at whistling actually than doing this glissando on my saxophone but basically if you can whistle you start low and then you want to go higher in a kind of glissando you have you have to feel what happens there and that's exactly what happens with this glissando in the altissimos the same effect uh, basically your tongue starts more uh, to the back of your mouth and when you go higher you push your tongue further and higher simultaneously. Try it for yourself. Maybe perhaps not even higher. The most of it comes from your tongue starting more at the back and then pushing forward. So if you cannot whistle kind of like me, but even if it's worse, then you might take off your mouthpiece and this provides for the first very good exercise. Um, it's a great little trick to do but it's also a great sound exercise because you cannot play this if you don't have a good air support which is needed for a great sound and if you don't have control over your throat and your cavity inside so then you take off your mouthpiece I'm really bad at mouthpiece exercises but this is needed let me do it from the side so you see it probably more And then every little dink that's actually your airstream that isn't solid enough this wasn't the best one either of mine but it's a very so it's a very good feedback uh, tool for you to do this exercise and if you can do that then you gain the support and the control over your sound really so so it's a great sound exercise to try to do this so and that's actually basically it then you need to combine that with playing an altissimo and once you do that the only trick trick the only thing you need to do is kind of put your fingers in front of where your pitch is so you might want to you know you want to start kind of I don't know I think Eric and I do that as well I don't know what I do so much but 
Oh yeah, so I start with a overtone, a altissimo on what is actually a D, a high D fingering. But that, if you really play it in pitch, that should be the B altissimo. But I keep that one already really lower with, with my tongue in my mouth, really. And then my fingers go up, like chromatically, to a F fingering with the palm keys. And then my uh, tongue starts pushing the pitch. But I stay behind my fingers. That's the important part. And then you get that glissando. Um, I'm actually pretty fast with my fingers already. If you're beneath the pitch, I'll put them quite quickly already to that F position, which is the high D, that's the, the, the end note you want to target. Uh, so uh, have fun with that. The good news is it's a good exercise. The bad news is you'll need to practice and you cannot do that too much, by the way. You have to do it in small sessions. That's very important. Altissimos, um, just practice that for about five minutes every day, um, but not longer, or you'll get a very bad uh, sore lip, and then you'll not be able to play so well for the co next couple of days. So do that in five minutes, just put it at the side, do other things, and come back to it the next day. By the way, if you want to hear that Altissimo Glissando in a different context, it's pure coincidentally, but I've just uploaded a uh, pop cover reharmonization fusion e thing where I play a solo and I actually use that same tool so I'll give you a quick example in a different context. So the second trick, that false fingering trick, the So you do, but that's not completely the full trick because you'll notice that with this false fingering, one, two, three in the right hand, you play an A and then you press that, it goes quite up in pitch as well. It's not really a B flat, but nearly a B flat. It's more like a quarter tone there, right in the middle of A and B flat. Um, but to get it smoother, for this effect, Eric wants to kind of get it rhythmically on an A going. He want, doesn't want to get a quarter tone. He actually also mutes that uh, false fingered note. So when you press down uh, your right hand, one, two, three, which is that false fingering, uh, the little crosses on the sheet, then you also do a half tonguing. Half tonguing meaning you put your tongue against 50% of your reed. I use the left side. You kind of lay it from uh, down the reed and then you put it on the reed. So you keep also 50% of the reed still vibrating. That's essential. Also good air, air support. If you don't do that, your, your note will stop when you put your tongue against the reed, even 50%. So you keep blowing through the horn. If you've never done it before, your tongue will tingle a bit. It might feel a bit weird, but if you've done it a couple of times, that easily goes away. So, and then you combine it and it smoothens that overtone or that false fingering out. Listen to that. You can also do like, for example, a paradiddle like a drummer does. If like you have two kind of A's now, you have one normal A and one with the false fingering plus muted tongue. So you can pretend like it's left, right. And then a paradiddle for drummers is like a basic ones. Left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, right. <laughs> left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. That's right. And so on. So this is actually a little uh, thing I wrote in my false fingering guide that I have uh, on our web shop. If you're interested in a 
bunch of false fingering licks like these and tricks um, and also I show you how every false fingering is done. You, you might want to check that out, that might be fun for you. Are there any questions regarding the first or the second little trick? Drop them in the comments and if there are any other kind of tutorials you want me to make, always leave them in the comments. I watch the comments, I try to respond to them and if I find the proper time, which is hard at times to be honest because somebody needs to make a living uh, in between but I'll try to make them for you. If you found this valuable you might want to hit that subscribe button that helps us a lot. I'm Jorge Reinders from Sharp 11 Music and I'll see you soon a next time.